I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about tips on getting prepared for your egg retrieval. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist with over 15 years experience helping people build their families. And today I'm going to give you some tips on how to be prepared for your egg retrieval. The egg retrieval is a big hurdle and a wonderful goal to reach in your treatment. You could be doing IVF in order to freeze your eggs for fertility preservation. You could be doing IVF in order to create embryos. You're trying to get pregnant and build your family right now, but an egg retrieval is a big part of this process. So you have, once you get to this point, you have done all the preparation, all the learning, you've taken a lot of shots, you've had a lot of appointments, and then all of a sudden you're getting ready for this procedure, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be anxious. I am here to help you prepare and give you some tips to be ready. So first of all, how to prepare for the day of the egg retrieval. First of all, you never know exactly what day the egg retrieval is going to be until two days before the egg retrieval. So when you get your calendar and you're thinking about your schedule and kind of getting ready for your IVF cycle, your team might be able to give you a guess. Like, I think your egg retrieval is going to be in this like three to four day window, but really your ovaries are in charge. So the, all the monitoring and kind of checkups and blood tests that you're doing kind of one of the reasons you're doing these things is take good care of you but another is to figure out when are those eggs mature because that's when we want to do the egg retrieval so it's a combination of measuring the follicles on ultrasound looking at the blood work talking to your doctor and you will definitely know two days before your egg retrieval because you do a trigger shot a trigger shot is um, one final shot, kind of a maturation of the eggs. And the retrieval is approximately 36 hours after this shot. So if your egg retrieval is scheduled for 8 a.m. on Friday morning, you will do your trigger shot at 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So it's about a two day prep and plan for sure. Now, the timing of the egg retrieval might be a little bit different in your clinic. That's okay. Um, there's a little bit of variation, but in general, 36 hours is a typical timing. Once you know exactly when that day is going to be, you need to prepare to pamper yourself. So you need to have a ride to and from the clinic. You should not drive yourself after you have had a procedure like this and probably had some anesthesia to help you sleep. You should not have any obligations for the rest of the day. You shouldn't try to work. You shouldn't try to have scheduled meetings. Um, if you do have children or you care for children for any reason, you should not have the sole responsibility of caring for anyone else that day except for yourself. Um, you honestly, most people feel pretty good after their egg retrieval, but just in case you're tired, you're achy, you just want to plan for you. So think about takeout, think about fun movies you want to watch, um, make a couch really comfortable, just really, really no obligations, no responsibilities, make the rest of the day for you. So on the day of the egg retrieval, it's important to talk to your clinic and your medical team exactly what to expect. Things change, clinics change, certainly in the time of COVID protocols have changed a little bit, but in general, the procedure itself takes about 15, 20 minutes, but expect to be in the clinic from anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours, kind of checking in, getting ready, having the procedure and recovering, and then um, going home. So ask your team what to expect, but that timeline is pretty typical. So you'll check into the clinic, you'll meet your team, they'll walk you through what to expect on that particular day in that particular situation, but you'll most likely change into a gown. They'll double check that you haven't had anything to eat or drink that morning. They typically ask you not to have anything to eat or drink after after midnight, talk to your team about what they expect. Typically you'll get an IV and this is a great way to give you relaxing medication and medication that helps you sleep. Um, expect to probably walk into the procedure room and lie down on the procedure table. If you've never had a surgery or a procedure before, it can feel really foreign, a little nerve wracking. It's okay to feel really vulnerable. Um, I have had an egg retrieval before. I have had medical procedures before. And even though part of my job and my daily life for the last 20 plus years has been in a medical setting, when 
you're the patient and you're the one who's lying down on that procedure table and getting ready for a procedure, um, it feels different and it's nerve wracking. And let let your team know, you know, say, oh my gosh, I'm pretty nervous about this or this is kind of new for me. Um, you will be so surprised by the warmth that you feel when you show your vulnerability. I hope that your team just embraces you and really takes good care of you because that's what you deserve. When you lie down, if you haven't gotten an IV already, then you probably will get an IV. And quite honestly, you'll just go off to sleep. In my practice, um, the doctor, and, and especially, you know, I like to come and chat with people as they're going to sleep. Um, we talk a little bit. I try to make them feel comfortable and I try to think about a few things. I really want to point out to people what an accomplishment it is to get to the egg retrieval. I want them to reflect on that. They've worked so hard to be at that point. And an egg retrieval is like this exam that you've been studying for and you're sitting down for your exam and you can't study anymore. So it's kind of a little bit of a, like sit in that release a little bit and you can kind of relieve that pressure. It's really nice. It's, there's still worries. There's still unknowns. How many eggs are we going to get? Is this going to be okay? But just at that point, you've been so in charge of driving, like the timing of the medication and the getting to the clinic right before that procedure, just take a deep breath and realize, wow, I made it. The second thing that I talk to my patients about is visualization. We're always talking about, um, okay, so you're getting ready to take a lovely nap. Um, and so let's think about where you want to go on vacation. You get to decide because you're going right now. And it's so fun to hear some of the things that people say, um, really common for us in Seattle. Um, people want to go to Hawaii. Maui is really popular, sometimes Mexico. I've gotten some really sweet ones lately. I had a patient just last week say that she wanted to go to her grandmother's house. <laughs> and I just love that. So just kind of um, maybe practice visualizing before that day and um, and come to the egg retrieval and just kind of imagine yourself in a really comfortable, wonderful place as you go off to sleep. Sometimes people stay awake for their egg retrieval, but most of the time people go to sleep and it's a lovely nap. And while you're asleep, um, your feet will be placed in um, foot rests um, because the procedure is done vaginally. Um, there's no incisions on your belly. There's no stitches that have to get removed. Everything's done vaginally. And the way it's done is like a vaginal ultrasound. So if you're getting ready for an egg retrieval, you've probably had quite a few vaginal ultrasounds. And that's exactly what's happening at the egg retrieval. It's just that with the vaginal ultrasound, we're able to see the ovaries really well and we'll be able to get the eggs. So here is Uni. A friend of mine named her stuffed uterus Uni. So I'm just going to adopt that for a second. So here is the uterus. Here is the cervix. This is the vagina and you have fallopian tubes and um, ovaries right here. So I know in textbooks, we draw ovaries <laughs> way out here. It's just easier to see and conceptualize, but really they're quite mobile and they really are sitting kind of right here down in the pelvis, right at the top of the vagina next to the cervix. So with the vaginal ultrasound, the vaginal ultrasound is here. There's a little needle that goes right through the upper wall of the vagina into the ovary. So this needle is just going through the wall of the vagina, going right into the ovary and the eggs are sitting in these pockets of fluid called follicles. The follicles have been measured as you have gone through your IVF cycle. And when the follicles are a certain size, the eggs inside of them are mature. And so what we're doing with the needle is we're just going into the ovary and draining each of the follicles. And with that liquid comes the eggs. So needle, here into the ovary, drain all the follicles. And then we do the same thing on the other side. Needle comes out, ultrasound comes out, and you're done. The liquid that we get, the follicular fluid, we give to embryologists and they look through that fluid with a high powered microscope and they isolate the eggs from the follicular fluid. So that's why the procedure takes about 15 or 20 minutes. It's very simple, all done under direct visualization with an ultrasound and your team is there to support you. And while you're asleep, typically you go back to a recovery area in the clinic and we wait for you to wake up. When you wake up, which typically happens pretty quickly, you might be a little tired, you might feel a little groggy, you might feel a little crampy, um, and there could be some spotting, of course. Before you leave the clinic, you should get an update from your team about how many eggs were retrieved. And that's really important, and it's important to kind of talk through what to expect. If you were told at the time of your trigger, your last visit, 
before you were seen on that egg retrieval day that they were expecting 10 eggs. You had 10 follicles. You were expecting 10 eggs. If you wake up from the retrieval and you got 10 eggs, fantastic. That's what you expected. Um, if you wake up and they got 12 eggs, that's amazing. Like sometimes when we're doing visualization and trying to prepare for an egg retrieval, um, sometimes we don't see every single follicle. Some Maybe there's sometimes two eggs in one follicle, highly doubtful, but sometimes just sometimes you get more eggs than you're expecting and that's fantastic. But if you get less eggs than you were expecting, that can be heartbreaking. You're already just so anxious and you know that numbers are important. And so if you're expecting 10 eggs and you wake up and you are told before you leave that they got less than that, whether it's five eggs or eight eggs or just anything less than what you're expecting, it's okay to be disappointed. And I just wanna reassure you that sometimes there's not an egg in every follicle. Sometimes eggs are just immature. They don't respond to the trigger shot. They aren't ready to come out out. And so they wouldn't have fertilized anyway. Ask questions. Um, just make sure there wasn't an issue with the procedure itself, um, of course. But most of the time, if we get less eggs than we were expecting, it is just physiology. It's just the way the body is. And um, it, it's okay to be disappointed. But everybody is different. Like it is not over until it is over. Because some people can get 10 eggs and have five embryos and some people can get, you know, five eggs and have five embryos. So I'm just saying like, you know, that not every egg is going to fertilize, not every fertilized egg is going to grow to be a mature embryo. If you're doing genetic testing on embryos, not all of them are going to come back euploid or chromosomally um, balanced. And so um, it's just not over till it's over and it's okay to worry about numbers, but I just want to provide some reassurance if you're kind of in that waiting game. It's really hard. So much of this process is like hurry up and wait. So when you're ready to go and what that means is you're able to eat a little bit, drink a little bit, um, go to the bathroom, get dressed, ready to go. The person who brought you there, a responsible adult, takes you home and you get to enjoy how you've prepared to pamper yourself for that evening. Think about favorite movies, think about takeout, think about just resting and relaxing on the couch or in bed. You might be sleepy. Again, no obligations that day. Things to look out for and call your team can be pain that's out of proportion to what you're expecting or pain that's not controlled by the medications that your clinic gave you. Nausea, vomiting, heavy bleeding some spotting is normal after the egg retrieval but if you're having bleeding that looks like a heavy flow of a period or you're just worried about it just call you should have access to on-call provider whether it's a nurse or a doctor from your clinic um, that you can call at any time after hours during clinic to say hey i am having these symptoms i'm worried what should we do about it so don't hesitate to call that is what your team is there to help you with most of the time people are pretty achy after the egg retrieval. Sometimes people aren't. Um, sometimes people take Motrin or Tylenol. Talk to your team about um, what to expect and what options are available for you. Sometimes people have a little bit of spotting, but that usually goes away um, pretty quickly. Constipation can be really common after an egg retrieval because your body is making so much progesterone. So staying on top of constipation and getting tips from your medical team can be really helpful. Most of the time people can um, just rest and relax at home. But I do really want to emphasize it's important to really just relax. I have had a patient who told me afterwards she felt so great that she went rollerblading with her friends. Now, I just dated myself because I don't think anybody's rollerblading anymore. But I was kind of like, oh my gosh, you really just need to rest and relax. Because if you think about it, we really did just put a needle in the ovaries and your body needs to rest. So you can clot, you won't have any bleeding and you heal and feel better. So I really mean rest and relax. In the week after the egg retrieval, um, it's important to know how you're going to communicate with your team. So before the egg retrieval, you've probably seen your team or even your doctor um, a couple times a week, you know, over the times that you're taking the stimulation medication for updates and, and check-ins. And after the retrieval, especially if you're not doing a fresh embryo transfer, you might not see your team for a couple of weeks. And so it's important to say, how am I going to get updated? Are you going to call me with how many eggs fertilized? Are you going to send me emails? You know, how do I get 
get my questions answered. So it's just really nice to kind of know um, and how to set those expectations so that you get the communication that you need. If you're planning to do a fresh transfer, talk to your team about what to expect, when to start possible support medications like progesterone, really know how to communicate and know what the next steps are. If you are not doing a fresh embryo transfer, if you're planning to freeze all the embryos, you can expect to get a period about seven to 10 days after the egg retrieval. And you should know that there's a chance that this period is heavier than one that you would expect. Um, this is something that a lot of people don't realize, um, but they're so focused on kind of getting to the egg retrieval and the team is kind of counseling about eggs and embryos, kind of forget this piece. Um, but you, if you release more than one egg, then your body is making more estrogen and hormones leading up to that egg retrieval. And so the uterine lining can get thicker. And so that period after an egg retrieval can be heavy and crampier than you may experience on a regular basis. So I just really want to make sure that you know that if the next step in your care might involve a frozen embryo transfer or kind of getting ready for another egg retrieval, talk to your team about what to expect. Hey, what, what do I do? Do I call you when I get a period? Um, am I starting birth control pills um, the second day of my period? It's just really nice to know kind of what to expect. It's a timely, so it's frustrating if you get a period and then you call the clinic a week later and they say, oh, you should have started birth control pills that period. Now we have to wait another cycle to kind of get you and move you in the right direction. So I really hope that this video was helpful. It's so much to think about in preparation for IVF. You're thinking about the meds and the shots and the appointments. And this egg retrieval is kind of a huge, wonderful hurdle that you should honestly take pause and celebrate the fact that you're getting to that point prepare to pamper yourself, prepare to take time off, make space for it, um, ask for help, make sure that you have um, access to the clinic if you have questions, that you have family or friends that you can call if you need any help. But most of the time people do great with their recovery. I hope you're walking away with tips on how to prepare for that day, what to expect on the day of the retrieval, what to expect immediately with the recovery. And then also just in that next week or so. And just if anything is out of what you feel your comfort zone, you have questions, you advocate for your care and call your team because they are there to help you. So please like this video, comment with questions that you have, comment with topics that you'd like me to cover, subscribe to this channel so you can learn more and make sure to hit that bell so you get a notification when my next video is ready. Stick around for more learning.